Hello, welcome to the lecture on polymers. In this uh, lecture, we will look at uh, liquid crystalline polymers and uh, this is an interesting state uh, which uh, we have not discussed so far where there are liquid like characteristics, but there is a uh, crystalline order in the liquid like system. And of course, uh, we are familiar with the uh, liquid crystal displays. So, in small molecules and uh, in uh, in organic systems, uh, liquid crystals are well known, uh, but we also see that along the macromolecules, there can be small moieties or small uh, segments which can have liquid crystalline order. So, therefore, in polymers also we can have liquid crystallinity. Uh, just to remind you that this week we are discussing polymer materials of uh, different kind. Uh, we will look at uh, copolymers and blends and composites as we look at uh, the use of polymeric material in all different applications. And in so this lecture also we will uh, focus on some of the key uses of uh, liquid crystalline polymers. Uh, these are uh, materials which are used in small quantities compared to the overall uh, polymers usage, but uh, given the advantages they provide, uh, it is uh, used in uh, niche applications. So, we will uh, look at these uh, liquid crystalline polymers, but uh, by first looking at uh, what is uh, meant by the liquid crystalline state and then uh, look at few examples of uh, some uh, commercial materials and uh, what gives them uh, liquid crystallinity. And uh, in the end we will also see given that uh, we have rod like segments in liquid crystalline polymers, uh, how can that be exploited in polymer processing to orient the rod like segments. And so, uh, liquid crystal uh, are uh, materials uh, where there is a liquid like motion of molecules, but at the same time there is solid like ordering. So, uh, here for uh, rods or discs uh, the uh, ordering is clear. Uh, for example, with the uh, arrow which is uh, shown here you can clearly see that there is an orientation which we can assign for the disc or for the cylinder. Uh, but what is crucial about this uh, uh, state is the fact that there can be exchanged between these rods or between two discs. So, therefore, what is uh, translational motion of these uh, entities is possible. However, orientationally they remain more or less fixed. So, in this case uh, the director uh, vector as it is called is uh, pointing to uh, the uh, to one particular direction. Uh, of course, we could have a liquid crystalline order in which uh, the direction could be different in one place uh, and uh, it could be different in another place. And uh, within these domains there is exchange of uh, molecules which are possible. So, uh, you can read uh, a bit more about these liquid crystalline material and uh, how there are different types of liquid crystalline material depending on whether uh, it is a, a solvent uh, which leads to uh, the formation of liquid crystalline order or disruption of it or whether it is related to temperature. So, these are uh, uh, textbook uh, related information uh, on uh, liquid crystals of small molecules. Now, given that we are looking at uh, a macro molecule in this course, what we are uh, uh, looking at those set of macro molecules where in parts there is rigid rod like moieties. So, now what can happen once you have uh, this kind of a system? is the fact that uh, some amount of ordering can take place between these uh, rigid entities. And so, so, just the way we drew a director vector for a small molecule liquid crystal, now these segments of uh, uh, polymer chain can align themselves and therefore, we can again look at a director vector. So, these uh, uh, small groups which are present which prevent bond rotation or which are uh, leading to chain being rigid locally uh, are called mesogen. So, depending on uh, what kind of uh, macromolecule we have, we could have mesogen along the backbone the way it is uh, drawn here or uh, it could be as a branching point or it could be uh, as a side uh, chain and so on. So, there are various possibilities of uh, liquid crystalline polymers. Uh, also, uh, the ordering uh, is of different type. And again you can uh, go through and uh, familiarize yourself uh, with uh, pneumatic and smectic and in fact, if you do just an image search you will see beautiful pictures of how uh, some of these uh, materials uh, can uh, organize themselves in variety of different ways. Uh, of course, liquid crystal uh, given these kind of arrangements have very interesting optical properties. 
and that's why liquid crystal displays and there are so many products which are related to optical properties of these materials. In case of polymers though we will see uh, mechanical performance is what is the biggest advantage. So the liquid crystalline polymers can have the mesogen uh, along the main chain or uh, they can also have uh, in between a spacer. So we can have uh, mesogen which is rigid rod like uh, entity and then in between there can be spacers. So for example, if there is a copolymer of ethylene and uh, other components, then uh, the ethylene component will be flexible and the other components will be rigid. Given our discussion so far, can you try to guess what would these other components be? What kind of bonds along backbone might make the chain more rigid or less flexible? And if you think uh, and uh, recall some of our earlier discussion, if you do not have single carbon-carbon bond along the chain, that will immediately start leading to some amount of rigidity in macromolecular chain. So, couple of slides down, you should not be surprised looking at the groups that we will see which are part of the mesogens. So, therefore, mesogens can be on the side group, uh, they can be uh, a cross-link polymer can also have a, uh, the uh, liquid crystalline uh, mesogens on them and uh, generally these are uh, fairly high cost uh, specialty applications kind of material. But uh, given their requirements, let us say in electronic uh, industry or aerospace applications, uh, we use uh, some of these materials. Of course, Kevlar is the most prominent example of uh, these kind of liquid crystalline material. And we also have polyesters of course are very common material used in variety of applications. We also have liquid crystalline polyesters which are quite common. So, we will look at them. Uh, before we go on there, let us just look at uh, thermodynamically uh, what is, uh, what it means to have this liquid crystalline order. Uh, if we look at the free chain, uh, free energy change uh, for this transition between disordered uh, uh, mesogens of a ma macromolecular chain. So, I am not drawing the overall macromolecular chain, but you can understand that you know this is part of let us say a macromolecule. And then we are uh, looking at the rod like segments uh, ordering themselves. So, you could have an ordered state or you may have a disordered state. And so, uh, in, in uh, both of these cases, uh, so this is a disordered state. So, we are, uh, when we look at uh, the transition, we are looking at from a disordered uh, state to an ordered state. And so, the Gibbs free energy change for this uh, as we know can be uh, thought of as two different components. One is related to enthalpic component which is based on interaction between macromolecules and the other one is related to the entropic component which talks about the ordering as well as the number of different ways in which uh, these macromolecular uh, segments can be positioned with respect to each other. So, therefore, depending on the macromolecule that we have and depending on the kind of uh, steric hindrance that is present or in these uh, organization of rigid entities, uh, we will have uh, differences in terms of the entropy. Uh, what we uh, have as I mentioned is there is exchange possible between so, between different segments. So, this can diffuse, uh, this can diffuse and so therefore, they can change place, but the overall orientational order uh, remains fixed. So, macromolecular chains and especially the red part here can move around and the, because of that the rigid uh, this rigid uh, mesogens can also move about while still maintaining their orientation. And of course, in uh, this case they are all randomly oriented in any case and they will continue to be randomly oriented even if the red uh, segments move. So, therefore, uh, the alignment uh, when happens uh, of these uh, mesogens that leads to a decrease in orientational entropy because instead of these being oriented randomly, they are all oriented and in one direction. But at the same time, translational entropy is still possible. So, therefore, uh, high degree of translation entropy is retained and this is the liquid like character. So, we have a solid like character which is orientational entropy being lost and we have translational entropy still being high which is a liquid like character. So, molecules and mesogens in this case can exchange places and they can diffuse around. 
And so, uh, the influence of this orientational uh, order is on very high modulus and uh, strength. So, therefore, very good mechanical properties. The other feature that ends up uh, being uh, attributed to these polymers is because of this orientation anisotropy comes in. So, the properties in uh, one direction, so in this direction are going to be very different compared to properties in this direction. Of course, in a bulk sample we may have many such domains and they are all randomly oriented. So, in that case the overall bulk sample still may be isotropic. But we will see at the end of this class that how we can try to purposely orient most of the liquid crystalline order, especially let us say in a fiber. When you have a fiber and if you want all the orientational order in the fiber direction, we can get a very strong fiber if we do that. So, therefore, this orientational order is exploited for achieving very good mechanical properties. Now, over and above this entropic considerations of organization and assembly of these mesogens, uh, we also have uh, molecular interactions. And of course, these molecular interactions could be in the form of hydrogen bonding or in the form of pi interactions. We will see that variety of these uh, uh, mesogens and uh, uh, rigid rod like entity will have uh, benzyl groups. And so, therefore, there is uh, pi pi interactions or stacking possible. So, a benzyl group can be thought of as a disc and therefore, disc can stack as we just saw. So, therefore, uh, these interactions are important also. So, the overall Gibbs free energy for whether liquid crystalline order will uh, occur or not will depend on both of these factors. However, one thing we need to keep in mind is the enthalpy of crystallization for disorder to ordered liquid crystalline system is much less compared to a crystalline melt to crystalline order that we already discussed uh, in a 17 and 18 lecture earlier. And that is because the orientational order is only present, translational entropy is still present and therefore, there is flexibility of molecular motion. While in case of a crystal, what we saw is there will be a folded chain crystal and uh, of course, this will be uh, only vibrations around mean positions is permitted. So, therefore, this is a perfectly solid like uh, material while wh what we have in liquid crystalline cases is still liquid crystalline order present. And so, the overall energy change uh, when we go from random uh, to liquid crystalline order is much less compared to a, a melt to crystal transition. So, now uh, let us look at some of the commercially available examples of uh, these and just to compare, uh, let us look at uh, polyethylene terephthalate. So, the ethylene uh, group uh, of course, uh, gives it the flexibility, but we also have the terephthalic uh, uh, acid uh, associated group. And uh, so, uh, polyethylene terephthalate of course, has a glass transition temperature of uh, 75 to 80 degrees Celsius as opposed to polyethylene which is in uh, minus uh, 60 to minus 80 degrees Celsius. So, therefore, uh, PET already has uh, molecular rigidity much higher than polyethylene. However, still because of the polyethylene uh, seg uh, groups, uh, CC bond being present, uh, bond rotation around that is possible. Now, instead of uh, these, if we look at other polyesters uh, which are commercially available and here there are two examples of it, you can see that uh, now we have the same way bulkier groups along the backbone and also we have ketone uh, linkages which actually will prevent any rotation. So, that is the key to get liquid crystalline order. So, this molecule has lot more rigidity compared to the ethylene segments that are there in PET. So, therefore, we have polyesters which is PET and polyester which is uh, let us say Sumica super LCP or RTP LCP or these Vectra and Zyder. And the cleverness here is in terms of introducing mesogens or rigid entities along the macromolecular chain using similar chemistry of forming basically acid and uh, alcohol reaction to get polyesters. So, uh, one of the key feature in summary is to say to basically avoid the carbon carbon bond rotation and then presence of uh, bulkier groups along the backbone to improve the chain rigidity. So, now uh, just to give you how much difference does this make by just uh, may introducing these mesogens uh, and uh, in this slide I have taken uh, commercially available data uh, based on uh, PET and liquid crystalline polymer just to give you an idea of how much difference does it make. 
and this is a slightly complex uh, diagram. So, just uh, spend some time looking at uh, what is being tried to say. So, we, we are looking at three different properties, tensile strength, tensile modulus and strain at break. So, uh, and we are looking for two different materials, PET, PET bottle, PET and then uh, liquid crystalline polyester. And uh, let us look at uh, tensile modulus first, you can see that uh, the scale goes from 1 to 100 and then of course, uh, this is uh, 200 also. So, you can clearly see that uh, the uh, LCP polyester has higher modulus compared to PET. Similarly, you can uh, see tensile strength of uh, PET is less compared to the LCP polyester. And this is a logarithmic scale by the way, so the difference between the two is quite huge. It is uh, more than uh, 3, 4 times some of these property changes. But on the other hand, if you focus on strain at break, you can see that uh, strain at break for PET is much higher. So, clearly therefore, uh, uh, the PET is uh, less stiff, it is less strong, but it is more flexible compared to the LCP polyester. You can also look at the thermal response of it and uh, we have already seen that uh, instead of looking at glass transition temperature as a transition, uh, many engineering uh, uh, applications people look at uh, the Wicat softening point or the heat deflection temperature. And uh, in both cases, you can see that uh, the PET is much less compared to the transition points. Uh, you can see here uh, the difference if, uh, so this is uh, 200 and this is 400. So, you can see what the deflection temperature increases by 200, 300 degrees Celsius. So, that is the advantage that you can get by introducing liquid crystalline order in a material and uh, while processing you introduce this order and then bring it below glass transition temperature. And now, because of that order which is present in the sample, the mechanical properties get a tremendous boost the thermal stability of the sample also increases very significantly. So, that is why you can see the other claim that I made that even though these materials are expensive due to the chemistry and processing of them, they are still used in fair number of niche applications. And Kevlar which is the most commonly known uh, and uh, popular example because of its spectacular properties uh, is uh, useful uh, because of this liquid crystalline order. And uh, basically it is uh, uh, properties are extremely high. So, there are different grades of uh, uh, Kevlar which are present and uh, property can be as high as 130 giga Pascals. And uh, more importantly, it is specific strength. And uh, by specific strength, we mean uh, the strength or any mechanical property per unit mass, per unit weight of the polymer. And you can see that in aerospace applications, this will be such a premium quad quality to have that if your specific property is very high, which means you need to use less of your material in terms of mass and uh, which is the key characteristic for a material being very light and useful. So, for metals for example, this uh, is around 100, but uh, for uh, Kevlar it is 2500. So, there you can see 25 times uh, specific uh, mechanical properties. And uh, the uh, temperature range uh, for long term use in air is also very significant. So, you can use for example, in a variety of applications where temperature can be as high as 150 degrees Celsius. So, just to uh, uh, let you know that you know since uh, as polymer scientists and engineers, this is one of the successful examples of uh, manipulating molecular level details to achieve spectacular performance. And so, Aramid. Uh, uh, you can look up and try to see which family of polymer does it belong to. Uh, is it a polyether, is it a polyamide or is it a polyimid? And uh, the other thing about Kevlar and this is uh, taken from uh, the commercially available uh, data sheet as to how you can exploit this liquid crystalline order during processing to organize the order and uh, then once we bring it below glass transition temperature, the order gets frozen and we have excellent mechanical properties. So, in case of Kevlar, if you notice these groups, you can answer the question which is there on the previous slide. And uh, the key uh, feature here is these hydrogen bonding between these moieties. I am not going to take the name of these moieties because I want you to think about the answer on the previous slide. But you can see that uh, basically there is a stacking of these uh, chains because of the strong interactions between different chains of polymer. 
And so you can see that there is uh, therefore an orientational order which is present. So now uh, if you look at uh, any macromolecular system and if let us say it is a flexible macromolecular system, in dilute systems basically there will be macromolecular orientation in all random direction. Even if you increase the concentration, the randomness will remain. And if we now extrude this polymer out of a narrow opening and then if we stretch it to make a fiber let us say, then what we will end up getting is of course partially extended chains. And this we have seen orientation of macromolecular systems uh, we looked at in a quite a bit detail in uh, lecture 20. And uh, now uh, instead of this flexible segments, if we have rod like segments. So, in case of dilute solution also these will be present, but randomly organized. Even when we increase the concentration, there will be some uh, tendency now because of the concentration is too high, instead of them being crisscrossing each other, there will be some tendency for them to start ordering themselves. And if you now do processing, where you try to extrude them, spin them through a very narrow opening and also then stretch them. So, then uh, what happens is you will get a perfect fully extended uh, orientational order. And so this is what is the key to the performance of uh, Kevlar and variety of other liquid crystalline systems. And so with this uh, we will close uh, this lecture and I am sure uh, all of you uh, have already narrowed down uh, what family of Kevlar uh, uh, does belong to. Thank you.